See if mine will start up. My battery's pretty dead. I need a new one. Yeah. She's pretty toast. <laughs> no. Yeah, probably not gonna happen. Okay. What's up guys and welcome to the channel. So today we're doing a buyer's guide for a 400DX so you guys can buy used 400DXs and not get screwed. First tip is don't even click on the post if the guy won't claim the quad for you. If the first picture is already dirty, don't click on it. I should probably go wash my quad for this video. All right, be right back. Oh yeah, that's a lot better. Uh. The reason I say don't click on one that uh, is covered in mud on the first picture or all the pictures if you click on the post is if they're too lazy or don't care enough to clean the quad up when they go to sell it, then they probably didn't do the necessary preventative maintenance like air filter and, you know, oil changes and just probably didn't care too much about the quad if they're not caring enough to clean it up before they sell it that is so to kind of lead into that i guess uh, what i mean is the first thing that everybody's looking for is cosmetics so how does the four-wheeler look all around um and i kind of want to say that cosmetics to me like they're great because you want your stuff to look good but like these are some serious scratches but if I back away and get like a picture look, you don't see those. You know, it looks clean, looks perfect. Then you get up close and there's a bunch of scratches. So to me, it's not that big of a deal. My headlight's about to fall out. I have like one bar on the front bumper. Um, actually only two, cause this one's not bolted in cause it's all stripped out and stuff. So, like, not all quads are perfect. Cosmetics are important for, like, judging price a little bit. But it's not like, if you go to buy a four-wheeler, you're not going to pay a certain price and then say, Oh, I got screwed because the plastics don't look great. Cosmetics are normally something you can, like, see as soon as you pull the pictures up. You can tell. Unless, like, this four-wheeler... And it's a little dirty still, like the it's been washed off, but it hasn't been detailed. But it has a lot of cosmetic damage, but a lot of it we could hide with armor all and stuff like that, but... So as far as cosmetics, like I was saying, it's just foolers get ridden hard. That is not the normal shape of this. It's been banged off a tree. Uh, my subframe, you can see it kind of curves up from wheelies catching the grass and the ground, and it's slowly bent it up. But... Little stuff like that, I mean, it, it is important, but it's not like, it shouldn't be a make or break for you to buy a machine, I don't think. Now, looking at some of that stuff, like, you should step back away from the quad, get down low, and check to make sure the frame's not slanted one way to where it's bent, which my, my subframe is tweaked a little bit to the left. You can even see that... Um, this fender is lower than this one. That's just the plastics being bent. But the subframe is tweaked that way from where it's been rolled. And if somebody says, odds are, odds are, if somebody says that they haven't rolled the quad, it's never been rolled, never been wrecked, 99% of the time they're lying to you. There's a few cases out there where that's the, uh, the truth, but most of the time it's not. Because I can tell you right now, this quad, my quad, has been rolled, gosh, I bet 10 times since I've had it in three years. It's not a ruined four-wheeler. It's not a clapped out four-wheeler. It's a great four-wheeler still, but it's just been rolled. Rolled doesn't always mean bad things, but like this four-wheeler has been rolled a few times too, uh, pretty hard a few times, but front bumper has been messed up. You can tell that, but that's a simple bolt on, uh, bolt off fix. You know, rip that off, get you a new bumper. Plastics are scratched up, but they're not like 
super torn or super bent they hold good shape still um all the a-arms are still in great shape and i would say his nerf bar got bent on this four wheeler but it didn't it got bent on a different four wheeler and we put them on here they're still in decent shape um he got a new axle because one of his really hard tosses so you can bend axles um the way you would check for that is ride it on the road and you would kind of feel it uh, some vibration and stuff then i would just kind of ride it on the trail and see how it feels and if it's not that noticeable on the trail you may be okay to keep running it until it causes you bigger problems down the road so just like the back i would get a good try to get a good front view and back away a little bit and just kind of get a night get a feel for how the quad sits make sure it doesn't lean one way or the other too hard it's a little bright behind it but these all sit pretty decent i definitely bent this lower a arm the last time i went out riding so it's not a super big deal um, my alignment's a little messed up I, I i'll probably take the time and fix that but for right now it's not causing me too many problems so not super worried about it Another thing a lot of guys don't look for is here <clears throat> here on the side of the frame where paint gets rubbed off. It'll kind of tell you how much the fooler's been ridden. Um, and that's fair. I mean, that's, that's a moderate wear, I guess. That's not... I'd say whoever had this before me didn't ride it a whole lot, and most of this wear looks pretty new. So it's probably from me. Which isn't... You know, again, just because a quad's been rode a lot doesn't mean that it's a bad quad. It just kind of gives you an idea maybe that the hours that they have on it. We'll check this one for, yeah, see this one's got a little bit more. It's a little bit higher here, but not, not much of a difference. Then uh, I'd say the next thing is Kind of just give it a look over here and see if there's any obvious oil marks anywhere from the engine leaking. Seals tend to leak up around the head, especially if they buy a 440 kit and put it on there. The seals get super skinny. They get super thin. They don't hold up to the pressure. So then they'll blow out the sides. That's why I don't typically recommend anything over a, a 426, but now, if there's a lot of oil and grease looking stuff back here by the starter and by the uh, front sprocket, they could be putting too much oil on their chain like I do. Because I put way too much oil on my chain because I don't want it to wear out and it just kind of slings it everywhere and makes a mess. But uh, <clears throat> here's an example of an oil leak on mine. The front of this seal here leaks. And it just runs, and that's up where the cam is. So what I do is every other ride or so, because it's a super, super slow leak, um, I check the oil, which I highly recommend. If you are going to check out a used quad uh, on the 400, check the oil reservoir. Nice and high. But I'll go ahead and clean it off. So when you check a 400's oil, clean the dipstick off, push it down in, do not thread it in, pull it back out. I run mine nice and high because like I said, it burns just a tick and it leaks just a tick too. So I like to keep it a little bit towards the upper limit. And you can see if the oil's clean. I'd say the other big thing that freaks people out about 400DXs especially is the motor noise. There's a lot of strange ticking and just rattling sounds. Let's see if mine will start up. My battery's pretty dead. I need a new one. Yeah. She's pretty toast. <laughs> no. Yeah, probably not gonna happen. Okay. Well, we'll get mine started and bring it back. But for now, all right, let's see if the 2012 will start right up for us. Oh. Oh. Bit. She's a little cold. 
She'll get there. That might be it right there. You guys have noticed it puffing a little bit of smoke and but it's not a super big deal um i've that four wheeler actually rode on it for i think uh a year and a half burning oil pretty hard and um i just checked the oil every time i went out for a ride and topped it off it's kind of like checking the gas <laughs> it's a little bit expensive way to do it but if you just want to ride and and not worry about uh, um, doing all the maintenance and stuff just yet. But guys, I uh, I don't think you can go wrong ever buying a 400. I don't think you can go wrong doing it. Uh, but I'm an obvious 400EX fan. I've always been a 400EX fan. And I'm an obvious Honda fan. Hate me if you want, but I was raised on Hondas. My dad raced Hondas. So, <clears throat> I'm a big Honda fan. And the 400DX is the best Honda they make. Uh, well, next to the 250R, which we'll talk about those one day too. Not today. Can't give you guys all of it today. Uh, but you can't go wrong buying a 400DX, I don't think. They're super reliable, tons of fun. They're plenty fast. Um, you know, it all boils down to you need to know what you're looking for so you don't overpay for something. I bought that four wheeler for two grand uh, three years ago, and the only stuff I've really done to it um, that would drive the price up for some people is an extended rear axle, extended rear axle, and widened out the front. Uh, that made a big difference for the way it looked. I tell people if you buy a 400, don't ever sell it. Um, because whatever's wrong with it can be fixed. Unless it like completely burns to the ground and you gotta build an entire four wheeler back from nothing like a pile of ash, then just go buy another cheap four wheeler. Um, another question uh, I've gotten is what's the least amount that I should pay for a 400DX? Uh, that's a tough question to, to answer because like I said, it really depends on what it looks like. Uh, there was a four wheeler that I should have bought. It was a, um, 
Story time. There was a fooler I should have bought a long time ago. Uh, it was, the guy had it for sale for uh, $8.50, I think. And he sent me a video of it running. It smoked not bad. It smoked decent. Uh, definitely needed a little bit of love. The frame looked pretty clean. Nothing was bent. I mean, it started right up. He sent me videos, uh, lots and lots of pictures. He cleaned it up pretty decent, and he was selling it for eight fifty. It was an old frog light. I think it was a two thousand, yeah, two thousand. And um, I, I talked him down. I think I talked him down to like five fifty or six hundred dollars. And I'm like, man, I would have more than that wrapped up in wheels and tires for the thing. Like, that is a crazy deal. And I just. I don't know. I'm stupid. So if you find one that the guy will send you a video of it running and rolling and driving and nice pictures. And it doesn't look cosmetically great, but it's a running four wheeler. Um, and it's under $1,500. Buy the thing. If you get one that the guy will send you a video... It looks pretty good, sounds pretty good, a little strange, blah, blah, blah. You, you don't identify some of the sounds, but it's running. It's obviously running. Uh, buy it. I mean, anything over $1,500, you are starting to look at cosmetic stuff. So if you're going to pay more for a better looking four-wheeler or extras, um, you know, like a, a wider front suspension or a wider rear suspension or a pipe or nerf bars or nice wheels and tires and all that stuff. I don't know, I'd, I wouldn't go over 2,500 unless you got it. If you got it, more power to you, buy whatever you want. But in my opinion, if you find a cheaper one and uh, don't worry about, find a cheaper four wheeler and don't worry about all this stuff. Don't worry about all that and just Put money into this all this other stuff is just for looks it's well i mean i guess not all of it suspension is kind of important but that is going to keep you riding so buy you a cheaper one and put money into that and then all the cosmetic stuff you can do later guys so I guarantee I missed some stuff so if you have any questions on something that I didn't cover or stuff that I did cover just throw down in the comment section below and uh, I have a discord um, I don't know what chat room I guess you would call that that I'm gonna use for Q&A's uh, but I am sweating my balls off because it is hot in this garage in Indiana so I'm out of here peace